tell you. We better not talk about her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, back with Pepper. Pepper, who is your favorite all-time singer? Or do you have more than one? Baby, I got more than one, but you know, uh, I'm 55, so I go back to uh, with a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> So I go back to the days when, in the '60s, when Aretha Franklin hey. did the did the the whole Muscle Shoals thing uh -huh. with Jerry Wexler, uh -huh. and when I heard Chain of Fools, and then Respect, uh -huh. and then uh, Baby, <laughs> Baby Baby, uh -huh. and then Think, she was the number one. Uh -huh. But then here comes Shaka. <laughs> oh, your vet Stevenson from <laughs> South Side of Chicago. From yeah. what? What is that? What? What Academy? Kenwood Academy. That's hey. Awesome. All well, right. Okay. Hey. <laughs> We're Rufus. So I was ruined by her. <laughs> and then from, because from that, there, <laughs> because she's she's not a vocalist. She's a force of nature. She is a force of nature. And at the time when she was when she was really really at her peak, when she was younger, it was uh -huh. just on fire. You could, could nobody. Could Girl, play. I will tell you this much. She did a remake of Michael Jackson's "Got to Be There," yeah. and made Michael Jackson yeah. sound foolish. Yes, she did. Sound <laughs> foolish. Who else? Uh, Minnie Ripperton. <gasps> oh, honey, right down, back down memory lane. Forget the high notes. Uh huh. I mean, just I'm not smoothness. even toward that, but it's the idea of the whole package being able to do arias uh -huh. in R&B and rock music, which is incredible. And then the group that she came out of, which was called Rotary Connection, which was incredible because you had people like Charles Stepney, Clarence McDonald, all the people that went on to to work with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Those are the people. You know, Pap, you, 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 you're talking about that with a lot of passion. Yeah. Let me ask you, what is lacking in today's music? I would say passion for, for a certain amount of, of, of reasons. Uh, you've got a lot of corporations who are basically running the music business today. And it's not about passion anymore. It's about the dollars. How much money that you can bring in for the corporation? Isn't that sad? It's really sad because of the fact that people like us, we basically have the power. It's in our hands again, which is great. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not the same when you had the companies back in the day that were actually springing up because they had a handful of artists that they wanted to present to the world because they believed in the music, like the uh, Ermit. Uh, what was his name? Ermit. Uh, Talk to me. Uh, the guy who started, the people who started Atlantic Records, Erdogan's. Okay. You know that's going before me. Honey. That's okay. Going before me. The, those those things. Those uh -huh. people that actually went out and found artists, or like John Hammond from Columbia Days, mm -hmm. when he found Bessie Smith, he found Aretha Franklin, he found George Benson. Bruce Springsteen, this one man single-handedly literally well, put together you, all the legends. You know, girl, I've, I've always maintained that that MTV single-handedly destroyed music. Right, right. They destroyed music. Really? Yeah, I don't want to stay. I don't want to uh, dwell into that too much um, I, because I could I can be here all night long talking about this. Uh, let me ask you, what do you like about the music scene at this point? Uh, a lot of energetic groups. Uh, a lot of the younger ones, they really want to go back to the days of the old school. Uh -huh. They they want to learn how to they they're learning how to play their instruments. They're really getting into situations where they they want to be better than what the parts and the sums of what the industry has dictated to them in the last 10 and 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. They really want to go back and pull some of that old stuff and, and combine that into the new. The new stuff. And that's why I love Coldplay. I love that group because of the fact that Chris is trying to bring in. He brings in people like Kanye West. Uh, he brings into the rap hip hop scene, mm -hmm. but then he also loves dealing with topics of, of love that that go back to the Motown days. Hey. And he's from London. I mean, it really his discography is really phenomenal, and what he knows about music, and I really respect that. Uh, I I love. Uh, this kid Ryan Adams acoustically uh -huh. that can take uh, Oasis song Wonder Wall. If you ever hear that, I saw, I heard, I've, I heard Oasis singing. I haven't heard this child singing. Ryan Adams is his uh -huh. name, and he does it just all on guitar, and it's phenomenal. He blows yeah. me away every time he sings it. Uh, Amy, Amy Winehouse, I love Amy. 
I, what's not I, to love about I'm, the I'm Amy? I'm praying for the child. I just want her to get. You know what, sweetheart? <laughs> Amy is kind of Amy. Amy is resilient, honey. Yeah. I call her Teflon Winehouse. Yeah. There ain't gonna be too much. Right, right. That's gonna that's gonna <laughs> mess with her. There ain't gonna be too much that mess with her. But I love her though because she's a writer. She's brilliant. With, yes. With with the literary. Yes. It's, it's incredible. Yes. What she can do. So. What inspires you musically? A lot of topics. You know, I, I sit up and watch uh, the news 24-7. Girl. Literally, I do. That I is do. not good. But, baby, you know what? It gets me into so many topics uh, of the day on what's happening with these people. To see them combusting right on the TV. <laughs> and I'm sitting up there and I'm looking at all this stuff that's going on. And I'm saying, that just can't be. Uh -huh. How can these people be doing all this stuff and have a career on top of it? It's, it isn't it funny how it, it's less about the career but more about the private the private business and yes, stuff? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And uh, and which which go you know because everyone loves the behind the scenes. Oh, right, sorry, right, right, Papa. Right, right. What is the behind story? Because does your mama know you're a freak? <laughs> <laughs> that was written uh, basically after I saw Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan on the news one day and and it if it, it was like doing the remote control you turn on a channel they're talking about one you turn on another channel they're talking about the other one and it was going back and forth and i was just saying where are these parents how come their, their families don't know what these people are doing you know so i came up with does your mama know first of all because that's a huge party line that a lot of the djs use over here in the states but also over in Europe. Uh -huh. So I wanted to come out with that but I said you know what I need a hook to, to bring in to to go with does your mama know. Mm -hmm. So I said how about you're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> because you're asking that question dealing with these people. Miley Cyrus and all of them. There you go. There you go. One last thing. Um, you want to tell me how MySpace and how the Facebook yes. saved your life. Baby you know, when I got into MySpace, nobody of, of the divas, hardly, were on that on the site. Mm -hmm. When I got on it, and I was loving it, and I told everybody on how all these people were from Europe were getting in touch with me, all the DJs were actually coming to the site and signing up to be my friend. And then it got to a point to where I was actually getting tracks from these people. It changed my life and a number of others. Then everybody joined. And now they've got their pages are better than mine. I signed up Evelyn Champagne King. Hey, honey, she got like four sites <laughs> with Bless different her. colors, different pictures, and everything. Bless her. And and Pappy, if the children want to get a hold of you, what is your MySpace? It's uh, MySpace.com uh -huh. forward slash Freckle Bandit. And I'm under the name Hello Peppa. Hello Peppa. There yeah. you go. And um, girl, I guess. It. Yes, baby. I guess that's it, honey. In 2001, yeah. we were in the back of a limousine talking about Stevie Wonder and all that. Fast oh. forward seven years later, it's no. like no time has passed. No. You look, you look more incredible now <laughs> than you did back then, girl. Your energy <laughs> is higher than it was back then. Um, let's see what else can I say in conclusion. Um, this, girl, you know, I, I do this for the children. And the right, children right. that were not here to, to hear this, do you mind if I if I tape your performance? Oh, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, they can get in touch with me also too, baby, at peppermache.com and facebook.com forward slash peppermache. Uh -huh. And just come talk to me because I try to talk to everybody. Uh -huh. I, I'm the only one that, that literally talks to everybody. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Um, I guess that is it. And so um, tonight is Saturday night here at uh, Circuit Nightclub. It is May the 17th. And if you ain't here to hear Pepper Mache, too bad for you. But being the diva I am, I'm going to bring it to you on the YouTube. And at this point, I would like to thank the graciousness of Circuit Nightclub. If you ever want to hear about the, uh, the details that are going on at this club, you go to www.circuitclub.com. And with that being said, um, we're out of here, except for one thing. Sally, say something sweet. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Pep, we always give a little love at the end of my, uh, at the end of my tape. So there yes, we go. Mm -hmm. Then we're out.